Hi everyone, welcome. I'm jumping on a little bit early so that I can make sure everything is working okay. How is everyone? Um, let's see. There we go. All right. Now I can see comments. If anybody's on here watching live, I have quite the setup going on here. Um, I'm not sure I can move that over there. Okay. Might have to just leave that there. All right. Welcome. Whether you're watching the replay or you jump on a little bit later during this live, I am Nicole Steele of the owner of the Joyful Stamper. Hi, Jane. Uh, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Welcome. It's a little bit gray and drizzly outside, as you can see. It is not that much lighter here in my stamping dungeon. I have about half of our family room, which is in the basement, and there's one teeny tiny little window up there and it's not even sunny outside today so yeah not much light being let in but I've got two lamps here so I don't know, I'm just doing the best I can with what I've got right isn't that what we're all doing <laughs> so okay so news um, stamping news today well if you're familiar with celebration that's Stampin' Up's biggest promotion of the year. For every $50 you order, you get to pick something free from the special celebration catalog, this little brochure here. Well, Stampin' Up is releasing a whole other brochure of more products. So March 3rd, that's going to be available. But if you're a demonstrator, it's available to you now, the second release. And my two favorite things in the second release, there is a paper pack that is foiled flowers in rose gold. Yeah rose gold and silver and you can color on them and there's going to be a vellum paper pack it's embossed vellum and it's in these beautiful spring colors so it's going to look really nice on easter cards i can't wait for it so yeah i was super excited um what else is going on um it's the last week to sign up for february's paper pumpkin kit which is a valentine themed or a birth sorry, excuse me a birthday themed one and those are the most popular cards to send. So, um, and also I started a newsletter. So instead of doing Tuesday updates on my blog, you can subscribe to the Joyful Stamper Stampin' News and every Tuesday it'll get sent to your inbox. And the link to sign up for that is on my site, thejoyfulstamper.com. So today, today what I have for you is I decided I'm gonna case some samples from the celebration catalog, you know, because sometimes you don't always have to be original. You don't always have to be unique. If you just want to sit down and stamp, pull out your catalogs for inspiration. That's that's what they're there for. They're filled with beautiful samples. So I, I pulled out um, a shaker card, which I don't know about you, but shaker cards always intimidated me, always intimidated me. Um, but then I found this one in the celebration catalog and it uses a punch and just three simple pieces and I did it and I was so excited and I had no trouble with it now having said that watch I'll probably have trouble as I'm doing it live because isn't that the way it always is when you do something live right so I am gonna feel free to comment uh, as we go along ask questions if you have questions because I'll be looking at my screen to see if there are any of those and share this please Yes, if, I would be so appreciative if you would share this video. So last week, I said I would do a drawing if anybody shared this video. Well, yes, I had two shares. So the name drawn was Amy Lynn, and Amy at Lynn, I have a pack of handmade cards to send you. So I'll get your address. I think I can get it. Um, if not, just message it to me. And I will get these card, handmade cards in the mail to you. I am so grateful for anybody that shares these videos because it helps me expand my reach. And I'm just so appreciative of the support of my little business here on the internet. So, all right, I will switch this camera down to my desk. So if you get dizzy, just go ahead and shut your eyes while I do that. And you'll get to see where I stamp. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little bit of fumble fingers there. So hopefully 
That is good. Okay. I think I'm in view. Okay, so these are the two cards that I am going to make today. This is the shaker card. There's little sequins in there. And this is a friend card. And both of these were cased from the Celebration catalog. And there's lots of samples in here, and you shouldn't be afraid to case them. So specifically, I'm going to be using this Lily Impressions Designer Series paper, and I'm going to be using the Metallic Baker's Twine and Sequins Combo Pack. So this is the card I cased. I did not have this particular die, which is these ones right here, Lily Pad dies. So I used what I had on hand, which happened to be a daisy punch, and I thought it worked quite nicely. So we're going to case that card today, and then I cased this one too. So you can see I adjusted it using what I had on hand, which is always the, the best thing to do. I mean, of course, if you see something you like, you get it, but you can always supplement with what you have on hand. So this Lily Pad, or the, excuse me, this Lily Impressions Designer Series paper, it comes in 12 by 12, but these are the patterns. I cut them down into 4 by 6 inch swatches so that they're easier to see. And there's a watercolor print on one, or not watercolor, an oil print on one side and a solid color print on the other side. So you'll have a pattern here and then when you flip it over, there'll be a solid color on the back. And that's for each one of these. So you get 12 by 12 sheets of these and I believe there are 12 sheets in a pack and it's free with a $50 order. So that might be one of your options. And the other thing I used on these cards was this metallic and sequins combo pack. Bermuda Bay, So Saffron, and Calypso Coral. And I don't know if you can see in these sequins, they have stripes on them. We're gonna use these in our shaker card. But this is another free item with a $50 order. They're so fun, so fun to play with. All right, so let's get started. I'll start with the shaker card since I know that's the fancier one, although not necessarily the harder one. And I will get my supplies out. And again, as always, I'm going to have the measurements both on a project sheet that I'm going to link to on my blog and in the description to this video. I always upload this video to my blog afterwards and to YouTube, and you can always watch it on Facebook here on the replay. So move that up in the corner. These are the pieces I'm going to start with. This is thick Whisper White cardstock and it's cut at five and a half to eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. And I'm going to go ahead and fold that. And the Stampin' Up! carries regular Whisper White and thick Whisper White. You want to make sure when you're using white as your card base, you use the thick Whisper White simply because it's thicker so it can stand up and you'll be able to layer a lot of pieces onto it more easily. And it won't get floppy and flimsy and fall over. Now, these two circles were die cut from our stitched shapes dies, which are found in the annual catalog or the big Stampin' Up! catalog. And in this die set, you'll get a variety of stitched circle shapes, stitched square shapes, and stitched oval shapes. For this shaker card, I die cut two stitch circle shapes that were exactly the same size. So you just take the die, run it through your die cutting machine twice to get two of these. Then the next thing I did is I took, I don't know if you can see this, this is a window sheet. Stampin' Up! It's a clear piece of acetate. Stampin' Up! sells uh, a package of these. You get two 12 by 12 size sheets of this acetate. I ran this through my die cutting machine also with the same sized stitch circle die as I did these two whisper white shapes because they're going to get layered and I want them to be the exact same size. So all told you're going to run the same shape through your die cutting machine three times. One, two, and three. Make sure you don't lose this piece like I've done because uh, you can't see it. It's clear. <laughs> So it's really easy to lose in your messy craft space unless you're a super neat crafter, which I am not. This is a little piece of garden green cardstock and we're going to stamp and emboss our greeting onto there. So let's do that first. 
We're going to use a Versamark ink pad, and I'm going to use the Smile Greeting from Daisy Lane. This stamp set is also found in Stampin' Up's annual catalog. I'll show you the page number. Um, it is page 23, right there. This is the stamp set. And you can see there's two punches that coordinate with two of the images, the daisy punch and then the small daisy punch. We're gonna use both of those today and this is the set we're gonna work with. So that's in the annual catalog. Set that aside. And we're gonna use the smile greeting. So before I stamp with it, I'm gonna use an embossing buddy to de-static it. Is that a word? I'm gonna rub it on there so that I can get rid of any static that might cause the embossing powder to cling where I don't want it to cling. Now I'm gonna ink the smile, the word smile up in Versamark and I'm gonna stamp in the center of this garden green cardstock. Okay. And then I'm going to take some white stamp and emboss powder. And I'm going to sprinkle it onto my paper. Now it comes in a, a little plastic jar. I buy several jars at a time and I dump them into these Ziploc containers and then I label them with what color embossing powder is on there just because it's easier. I can always keep them in the container. I don't have to try to get it back into the little jar. And now I have to turn the heat gun on and I'm gonna let it warm up and get nice and hot. So if you let your heat gun warm up enough then it lessens the chance of your cardstock warping and bending when you are heat embossing. So let it warm up for maybe 10 or 15 seconds and then you can aim it at your cardstock and you can watch the magic happen as the powder melts and gets smooth and shiny. There we go. And I'm going to be embossing on the second card so if you need to see another demonstration you will. All right, got my scissors there, and I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down a little bit because I do want it to be just a little bit smaller for fitting on my card. I want to make as much of my shaker element visible as possible, so I want my sentiment to be as small as possible. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stamp in Calypso Coral ink on just one of those stitched squares there, or stitched circles, sorry. I went to kindergarten, I promise I knew my shapes. We're going, and what um, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink it up with Calypso Coral ink, and I'm using the larger daisy in the stamp set, in Daisy Lane. Ink it up good, and I'm gonna stamp it in the middle of this Whisper White cardstock here. There we go. And that's the last time I'll need that ink pad so I can put that away. Okay, then what I'm going to do on this second one here so that I know where to punch, I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to mark roughly in the center of the second circle. And that'll just give me a little guide as to where I want to punch. Now there are two punches that coordinate with the Daisy Lane stamp set. The larger Daisy and then we have a smaller one. I'm going to be using the larger daisy to punch out my shaker card because that's the image I punched there. Now here's a trick, if you can tell. This is a little too hard to hold on to and line up evenly. It's just not big enough. So what I'm going to do is use a post-it note and I'm going to stick it onto that and it'll give me something to hold on to so that I could slide this into my punch. And I'm going to line my punch up the center of my daisy punch roughly where that little dot is that I put and then I'm just gonna give it a squeeze and then what you can do is if you want you can save the daisy punch out for another project I don't like to waste things so that's probably what I will do and we have this now and just like I said there it is <laughs> I panicked for a minute I thought I lost the acetate just like I said to be careful not to do and I almost did it I almost did it okay this is going to get glued onto the back of this punched shape so do you see that I'm gonna glue it right to the back of that okay and to glue that 
I'm actually just going to take my snail adhesive and I'm going to run some snail right in between where those petals are. You can also use glue dots. That would work too. But my snail's convenient and handy, so that's what I'm going to use. And now we're going to lay this right on top. The other nice thing about using snail is if you don't get this lined up just right, you can pull it back off and do it again. Whereas if you use glue dots, it's a little bit dicier about pulling it off and realigning it. All right, so there we have the acetate on the back of our punched out circle there. Now, this piece. Stampin' Up! sells these adhesive strips. They're called foam adhesive strips. You'll find them on the adhesives page on my uh, online store or in the Stampin' Up! annual big catalog. And I've used quite a bit of them. So, because I've actually made quite a few shaker cards. And they come in long strips. You can cut them and trim them down to size. So it's perfectly fine to cut them with your scissors. But I'm going to pull off one long strip because that's actually roughly about what we're going to need for this. And you can see that they're dimensional. They have some height to them. They're sticky on both sides. One side has liner tape protecting it. The other side is sticky and has the adhesive. They're sort of like a Stampin' Dimensional, but only in a long, skinny strip. And what you can do is you can bend them into any shape you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the edge of this circle, and I'm going to go all the way around it. Now, my head, if it's in the camera, I apologize, but I have to sort of lean over it to be able to see where I'm putting this. And you just want to wrap it, can you see that? Wrap it around the edge of that circle. And the height of this foam adhesive strip is what's going to keep our shaker card elements contained so they don't go flying everywhere. You would not want to use Stampin' Dimensionals because there's be too many gaps between the dimensionals. This is one continuous adhesive strip, so nothing is going to escape. Now you can see the strip's a little bit longer than I need, so all I'm going to do is take my paper snips and I'm going to cut a little piece off and then tuck those two ends together just like that. And I always like to save these little pieces no matter how small because you never know when you're going to need just that little bit to finish off a shaker card enclosure. So go ahead and save that and put it back on the sheet. Okay, next thing I'm going to do while we have the embossing buddy out, so that your shaker elements don't stick to the sides of your foam adhesive strip, you can use the embossing buddy to take that static away. Maybe easier to just pull that liner off first. That's the liner tape that was on the foam adhesive strip. And just take this and run this along the inside there. And that'll take away the static of that so that all your things will shake around when you put them in there. All right, so I peeled off the liner. So now the top is sticky also. And now I'm going to put in some of these fun metallic sequins. And it's up to you however many you want to put in. I didn't put a whole lot in this first card here, so I'm putting a little bit more in this time um, because, you know, more is more when it comes to card making. That's my motto. More is more. So now we have that filled in there. Now, you're not limited to sequins. You could put, um, well, you would, as long as they didn't have adhesive on them, you could put rhinestones in there. You could put um, little embellishments, metal embellishments in there, anything. Anything that would fit in there and that you can shake, rattle, and roll around is great fodder for a shaker card. Now we're going to put this top piece on. Just make sure when you put it on top of here that the side with the clear acetate is facing down. We don't want to see that ugly adhesive. That wants to, We want that to go on the inside. So we're going to lay that on top. And again, I might have to get my head into the camera to make sure I line this up right. And we're going to lay it on there. Except don't do what I just did. Make sure <laughs> you line it up with your daisy. It's on there for good now. I, oh, maybe I can peel it back off. Let's see. Yes, I can. Yay. Okay. Yeah, I forgot that point. You want to make sure that uh, you can line up your punched out image with... Um, the daisy. Let me get those back in there because they fell out. 
Ah, the beauty of live. You can see that we all, even us demonstrators, make stamping mistakes. Okay, so I'm just going to line this up with my stamped daisy and then I will adhere it on there. There we go. That looks good to me. Okay, that looks much better. You can see much more of the daisy that way. Okay, and now you shake it and let's see. Nothing's coming out because of that foam adhesive strip. Aren't those cool? And they're so easy. I love it. We have four sponsor kids that live in Swaziland, although they call it something else now. And I love making interactive cards like this to send to them. And they like getting them. I always hear from them about how much they like getting these interactive cards. So I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue onto my Lily Impressions designer series paper and I'm going to stick it down to my card here. Tap it to get it lined up. Here we go. I love this particular pattern. I think I like because I like the Calypso coral color in it. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Okay, so then we have our shaker card element. We are going to glue that down and I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue to stick that down. You can use tear and tape if you want an extra strong hold. I'm not too concerned about it. I guess if I was giving this to a really small child, I would probably use tear and tape for the stronger hold, but um, I doubt I'll be giving this to a small child. It'll probably go actually to our one of our sponsor kids. I've already made two of these. What's it to make two more, right? They're easy. They're easy. All right, this smile is going to get glued to the side of the shaker card, so part of it's going to hang off. So I only need to put multi-purpose liquid glue on one half of it. And I'm going to stick it right there because remember, I want to expose as much of this shaker element as possible because it's so fun. Then I'm going to take the So Saffron metallic twine, and you can see it's got metallic thread woven through it. And I'm going to tie a little bow. And then I'm going to adjust it because the one side is a little bit too big. You know what? Let's start over. Let's start over with that. There we go. All right. That's turning out much better. Okay. I don't know about you, but when I tie twine, the bow, the loop part of the bow has a tendency to twist. And so I always fuss and fidget with it to get it the way I want it. And now I'm going to adhere that with a glue dot. Let me find my roll here. And I'm going to use my paper snips to take it off of there. And I'm going to stick it right above where that smile sentiment is. So look at that. See? It twisted. Sometimes that's why I like to double them up. Or sometimes a neat trick is to just stick it down on there and then you can fuss with it um, while it's stuck on there. But I'm not going to fuss with it because I'm live on camera. So that's the shaker card. Isn't that cute? I put a little more sequins in it this time. So I love it. And it's so easy. You can do any shape you want. You could do a square. You can do an oval. You can experiment with other punches that you have. Maybe you have, um, I don't know, stars or something like that. You can even... You don't even have to use a punch. You can use die cuts to die cut or dies to cut the middle of that shaker frame too. So just experiment, experiment, see what you like to do. All right, let's get on with the second card. The second one also uses paper from the Lily Impressions Celebration free offering. This one's a little bit darker, but it's just as easy. It's just as colorful, and we're gonna use the Bermuda Bay twine from the free metallic twine and sequins combo pack too. So a lot of free products on this card. Let me get out my supplies. We're sticking with the Daisy Lane stamp set and punches. Okay, clean up my very small stamp space here. All right, and that's what we have for that. And it looks like I'm gonna have to pull up some white scratch paper too. I didn't have that ready. There we go. So this is a five and a half by eight and a half sheet of garden green cardstock. Hello, Jay. Are you looking to pick up some stamping tips today? Maybe make a Valentine's Day card for Jen? Although I'm not making a Valentine's Day card today. Sorry. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is Garden Green cardstock, and we are going to glue down, not upside down, this piece of Lily Impressions Designer Series paper. I think my glue bottle's going empty. All right, and I can see I cut this paper just a little bit larger than my card. It's hanging off the edge, but that's okay. I'm just going to take my paper snips, and I'm going to trim it right off. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Then we are going to heat emboss. <laughs> Jay, you always make me laugh. So I'm going to use this embossing buddy again and tap it on to this Melon Mambo piece of cardstock, which I die cut with one of the smaller rectangles from the Stitch So Sweetly dies. They're so cute. They've got little scallops on them and little stitches on them, and I just love little touches like that. And we're going to use... Versamark again. And this time we're going to stamp the word friend. And I'm going to go right in the middle as best as I can. There we go. And we're going to use white embossing powder again. Always close your ink pad before you heat emboss because if you turn on that heat gun, and the powder goes flying everywhere, you'll gunk up and ruin your ink pad. It would be a stamping tragedy. A tragedy. All right, it's gonna get loud again. All right, remember, let this heat up for about 15, 20 seconds so that you don't warp your cardstock. And once you give it a go, then you can put it on there and watch it melt and get shiny. I love this stuff. Okay, focus. Now we are going to stamp using both of the big and small daisy stamps. And I'm going to stamp them on a regular piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to use Bermuda Bay ink. And let me check my notes because I can't remember the other. So saffron. There we go. So saffron. And this is a little stampin' spot. This is what comes in the monthly paper pumpkin kits, the subscription stamping kit that Stampin' Up! has. And so I save these. Um, I don't, they're good for traveling. They're good for traveling and I don't have a full size ink pad in Bermuda Bay because this one works just fine. So this is a good way to test ink pads too. So like if this became one of your favorite colors and you found you were using it a lot, you could just buy the full size pad of it but I'm gonna ink it I'm gonna stamp it twice because I want to make a really full flower image okay so I got that and then I'm going to stamp the smaller daisy in so saffron ink and I'll stamp that once and I'm gonna stamp it a second time there we go and then we're going to use the punches to punch these out. So we'll do the larger daisy first. Hopefully I got it lined up right. There's one. Let me pull this out. Okay. And then we'll do it a second time. Okay, and now I'm going to use the smaller punch to punch out the smaller daisy. So get that lined up. And it's kind of hard to line things up when you're not looking directly down at them. But I think I did pretty good. So, okay, I have all the pieces here. We're going to layer these to make a really full daisy. So let's grab that multi-purpose liquid glue again. Put a little dab in the middle there. And when I put this daisy on top of this one, I'm going to stagger the petals so it gives it a nice full look. And I'll put a little, another little dab there. Words were hard there for a minute. And put that one on. And the last daisy. And I'm staggering these as I go. 
Now I'm going to set this just aside to dry for a minute and then I'm going to fluff the petals when I'm done. <laughs> I have more gadgets than James one of the Bond of Stampin' Up! <laughs> Oh, and the thing is, my stamp space is actually teeny, teeny, tiny and cramped. Some women have entire, huge, ginormous rooms, and I have like a corner of our family room, so I actually don't have that much, relatively speaking, but I have enough that it's fun, because you don't need everything. All right, I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to put on the back of my sentiment there, and then I'm busting out the snail again. And we're going to use the Bermuda Bay twine. And we're going to use a lot of it this time. So what I'm going to do to get, we call these twine nests or ribbon nests or thread nests. Just depends on what material you're using. And that's exactly what they are. They're a nest. And the great thing about them is they're supposed to be messy and really imperfect. So if you're not so good at that stuff, this is for you. It's going to look great. And I'm going to take the snail and I'm just going to run a couple lines of it, like right there. That's where the nest is going to get stuck. So then unroll a bunch of this and you're going to wrap it around four of your fingers a bunch of times. I don't know, maybe five. Does that sound right? Yeah, five will be good. So then I'm going to trim it. And then I took it, slipped it off my fingers. It's in a circle. Now I'm gonna twist it. So it's in a circle, I'm gonna twist it. So now it's in a figure eight, and I'm gonna stick it right down where I ran that snail adhesive. And you'll have the loose end there, but that's okay. Just stick it down there. It's supposed to be messy. Next up, take the liner pieces off of the dimensionals on the back of your greeting. You know, I learned don't paint your nails red when you're working with paper because it scrapes off onto the cardstock, so it's really bad if you're working with white. So there's a little beauty tip mixed in with some stamping fun. I'm going to use a dimensional on the back of this too. Actually, I'm the worst person to give beauty tips because I have never been interested in makeup or hair or fashion. I'm a hoodie and jeans kind of girl, and I always will be. I don't like to get dressed up. So I'm going to stick this flower, these daisies, like... I don't know right there that looks good okay so these should be dry now so what I want to do is I want to fluff them up with my fingers just to make them stand out a little bit more and give them like a fuller look okay oh you know it'd be really cute you could make this a Valentine's Day card and instead of daisies you could punch out hearts and they would like all nest in each other oh my gosh that's a good idea I need to try that okay so back to the card that we're doing now so we've got this now we need to add some rhinestones we need to add some bling is that word overused yet see I don't know cuz I'm not like hip on this stuff so I have three teenage daughters but I still don't know any of this I'm hopeless I was not cool in high school I'm still not cool now that's why I... oh. okay there we go some rhinestone. Oh gosh, there we go. All right, that is the second card. Now, I did not cut a piece to stamp on the inside of this one, but I did on my original sample. And you can see it's okay if you want to leave the tail of your twine nest hanging out too. But I cut a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock and put it on the inside. And I just used garden green ink and so saffron ink to stamp two more images from the Daisy Lane stamp set there. And that way you can write inside the card and it's easier for people to see it. So let me pull in the other cards, the shaker ones. Those are our two projects for today. Remember to share this video, please. I so, so appreciate it. And I'll do another drawing for anybody that shares it. I'll have the drawing and announce the winner next, at next Tuesday's live. And if you want the project kits for free to make these two cards, all you have to do is go to my online shopping store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. Place a $35 minimum order before shipping and tax. Use this reward code right here which I also have it listed on my blog. And that will let me know that you want these project kits for free. 
And if you want to, you can bump your order up to $50 and then you can choose either this Lily Impressions paper or the Twine and Metallic combo pack for free. If you bump it up to $100, you'll get the project kits for free and you can pick the Lily Impressions paper for free and this combo pack for free. So a lot of free good stuff there. So share, shop, have fun stamping. Thank you for joining me or watching this replay and I will see you guys later. Bye.